stage takes place in the canyons of Kazakhstan, across the border and into the sands of Turkmenistan. Two countries, two very different landscapes. 520 kilometers of travel along tracks not used since independence in 1991. Turkmenbashi is the venue, looking beside the beautiful Caspian Sea. In the car section, there are two fights, that between the VWs, the order of the top four, and then who will come fifth. Yesterday, it seemed no one wanted to be fifth. Xavier and Gash falling out of contention. And today, I'm afraid, it's the same. Junior de Villiers called his fellow teammates crazy as he watched them pass each other side by side, heading towards the first checkpoint. Admittedly, he wasn't prepared to go the speed of his fellow Tuaregs. He effectively became a movie chicane as they made mistakes and then repassed each other again. Now, he lies 17 minutes off Alatea's lead. Mark Miller got embroiled in the heated battle between Sainz and Alatea, with three guns flat out off the last route. Oh. I'm getting stupid, man. Get full. Miller was clearly struggling with the terrain. It was vicious, not like any dunes that they'd seen before. And unfortunately, he also added to the list of punctures today, having to stop and change his left rear tyre. By the end of the stage, he had dropped back on the road and finished the day nine minutes behind the lead time. His main concern is keeping third spot ahead of Junior de Villiers. As with the last two days, Nasser al also had his daily puncture just before CP1, but reckons he only cost him a minute changing it. It meant that he had to push very hard at one point, bouncing through waist-high bushes to pass his teammates. He finished the day second. The gap to Carlos was reduced. It's not important to uh, push uh, too much here, you know, because um, we are only four cars all together, the same team, you know, but uh, everybody wants to win. I'm quite, quite happy uh, with this performance and uh, we learn a lot, me and uh, Timo. And I think we'll, uh, we'll have, uh, I hope we have good result here. Winner of the stage today was Carlos Sainz. After frustration yesterday, he was pushing flat out, trying to claw back time to Nasser al -Atir. Coming into the day, he lay about six minutes behind overall, but CP2, he was that margin ahead of the Qatari and looking like he might lead the rally. A small navigational error and a puncture meant he could only finish just three minutes ahead and still second overall. The man that was expected to be in the new fifth spot was Matthias Carr, but at CP1 he was three and a half hours behind the VWs. What on earth had happened to his buggy? Perhaps he'd got lost, perhaps he was stuck in the sand. Unfortunately, it was a little more serious for the man from Germany. He had a small accident in the dunes, flopping his car onto its roof and damaging the machine. It took him ages to get the car back on his wheels and moving again, losing his fifth spot and eventually finishing the day nearly four and three quarter hours down. He still leads the buggies though, 11th overall. But what of Bernard Arandone, the driver from Andorra, who's already had engine problems, but today he lost drive. And like Lavier, before him, he'll get towed home. With transmission fixed, Christian Lavier was back to his old ways. Fifth spot today but he's racing more for the sights and sounds of the Siltway Rally than a preferred position. Sixth today was Ruslan Mitsubishi, who, on day one, has been racing to get to Ashkabad, not really concerned about the position he sits. He had a pretty eventful day, witnessing Carl's accident and seeing rivals Berkeley stuck in the dunes. But then he had his own mishap, getting lost right on top of this canyon. His co-driver blamed the road book for their mistake, cost him too much time. Six today meant he's now fifth overall, best of the rest, and of course, best Russian. Ala Kuznetsov was seventh today, dropping a further minute from Mitsukov. He now lies 45 minutes off the fifth spot in his ex Pella Hansen Mitsubishi. Science, Alatia, Miller, De Villiers was how the VW stacked up today, with Lavier fifth in the standings. Overall, however, it's Alatia ahead of Science. Miller ahead of de Villiers, Misikov, best of the rest. The trucks 
are very special to Dakar. They require a very special kind of person to drive them. Bumpy and hard on the drivers. They really are mammoth machines. But why do the drivers do what they do? Yeah, I think uh, the passion of, of, of the rally raid uh, in trucks, I think it started uh, when I was uh, very young. My father started in uh, 1982. I was born in 80, so uh, I was only two years old. I don't remember a lot of it. We have uh, family history. My uncle won the Dakar for six times, so I follow up his uh, schedule. How can I say it? Because we are a small, small private team, but uh, supported by Tatra factory. We come from a little country, Czech Republic, in the middle of Europe, and uh, uh, we uh, were looking for the Dakar all the year. So uh, all the history, uh, it's connected to our family. So. That's why we are here even at the Silkway, because it looks like it's a nice Dakar series. Novy Grau Hockey. Vladimir Chagin says at the age of 16, I was actually a big fan of ice hockey. And I played that a lot. After that, I became a mechanic for a track team. И когда в 1988 году целью поехать на гонку Париж Дакар была тогда такая вот мечта, казалось бы, несбыточная. In the trucks, even the non-Kamaz drivers today bowed down to the speed of one very special truck driver. The landscape was spectacular, the driving equally so. Chagin was on fire. Despite the beauty, the terrain was also particularly daunting, as it was the first time many of the drivers had experienced the dunes. Martin Masek here, crossing the very soft sand. He was seventh today, one hour and 15 down, in the only Liaz truck. Overall, seven. Three hours and 20 minutes down, fighting the Anderoy. So to Chagin, and he was flat out. Yesterday he lost three hours after his front end around the world by the company with the rocket machine. The rival camera on the droid, Chagin, would never recover. Today he took chucks out of deficit for the lead, completing the course 27 minutes slower than his lead car. He's already back to sixth overall. It was also 27 minutes between Chagin and his nearest rival, Kabarov. The 201 truck leads the rally now by 35 minutes. His teammate three seconds faster per kilometre than the rest, he might have to consider pushing harder. He insists he was as flat out as he could be, but certainly did not take as many risks as Chagin, even stopping the small problems on his truck. Today, I was very careful, because on the first kilometer, on the first car, I heard something in the back, and so I stopped to have a look at the suspension. It was a good thing to do, because if I didn't, it might have broken. But no one passed us. It was important we did this, because we didn't want to make it. 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 Но самое главное, при этом мы сохранили автомобиль, не было никакой поломки. Дрой said Vladimir was crazy as he came past him 30 kilometers an hour faster. The Dutchman is not concerned though, as his focus is purely on Kabarov. With only a quarter of the overall rally distance remaining, however, 35 minutes might be too much of a gap unless his rivals fall into problems. So far, it has been him with all the issues. Today, he lost 10 minutes with yet another puncture. Although, unlike previous days, this time, Gerald admitted it was his own fault as he hit a bush going off track. Chakin passed me half beast. I'm, and then we realized, both of the, two, uh, the three guys in the truck, what are we doing here? He was... Uh, I think he had uh, wings today from Red Bull, but uh, he was really flying. Un unbelievable. 
Ilgazar Mardev was also a driver to suffer with tyre problems. Third, Kamaz getting a small puncture and needing a wheel change. Had he not stopped to help Chagin yesterday, he would be in fighting contention of taking second overall. But as it is, he is now third, a minute ahead of Lopret. The taxi driver having another bad day with his power steering broke, costing him 40 minutes. Eduardo Nikolev finished ahead of him in fifth, nine fifth overall. Two hours behind, Cavan leading. The Turkmenistan team are continuing in the rally over the dunes for the first time today. Zamabadov leading in 11th spot. So to the stage rankings, Chagin 27 minutes ahead of Kabarov. Deroy a further seven minutes down than Mardev and Nikolev round out the top five. And it's Kabarov who leads from Deroy, Mardev, Lopret in fourth ahead of Nikolev. The first taste of the dunes may have drained some of the less experienced competitors, but for the others, the landscape and the people were breathtaking. Tomorrow will be more of the same, although the focus is on the co-drivers with navigational difficulties as they try and steer their vehicles on the right road towards Balkanabad. <laughs>